What's up, everyone? Welcome into Week 9 Starts and Sits with Front Yard Fantasy. I'm Simon, here with my buddy Jay, and today we are going to be giving you four players that we think you should feel confident starting this week, and four players we think you should sit right on the bench for fantasy football in Week 9. Jay, we are going to come to you for our first startable player of this video. Yeah, so the first guy I'm going to go with is Zach Moss of the Buffalo Bills, and he is a very divisive player when it comes to fantasy managers, but he's got a lot of things going for him here recently. You know, he does have to battle with Josh Allen. Uh, he's basically the running back one on this team, um, but he's being used, uh, Zach Moss is being used in the red zone. He's got the most red zone rushes, the most red zone targets, and he's being used in the passing game. Over the past three games, he's got a 12.8 target share, which is Nothing to, you know, to get too excited about, but for a running back, that's fantastic. And he's got a pretty solid matchup. He's going up against the Jacksonville Jaguars, who, for points against, is giving up right in the middle of the road uh, for fantasy points for opposing running backs. But they are one of five teams that have allowed double-digit rushing touchdowns. So he's getting a lot more usage as of late. Uh, they're using him where it counts in the red zone, and I really like the matchup. Yeah, I, I think that's a great call, Jay. Uh, I think people should have at least uh, semi-confidence in plugging Zach Moss into their lineups this week because of the matchup, uh, maybe more so than in other weeks. But he's been a right. fairly reliable fantasy option so far this year. Right, it's not like I'm undervaluing. saying – Yeah, I'm not saying that he's an RB1 by any means, but I think he's – you can feel pretty comfortable with him as a, a flex play or a bye week replacement. He's going to get you back-end RB2 numbers, and if he's able to get in the end zone, I could easily see him finishing inside like the top 15 or so. Yeah, I completely agree. Uh, the next guy that I want to bring up, Jay, is someone you're you weren't saying that Zach Moss is an RB1, but I am saying that this guy is a QB1. Ooh. Um, this week, and I think he's got QB1 upside rest of season that people are not giving him the respect he deserves, and that is Tua Tungavailoa of the Miami Dolphins. Uh, when you hear Tua, I feel like the first thing that comes to mind is all the trade rumors and he's been underperforming. But whenever you go and look at the game logs in the games he has played, complete games, he has been not just average, but very good for fantasy so far this year. His worst game, um, not including the one where he got injured after only four pass attempts, obviously, was his past week against the Buffalo Bills, and he still put up over 15 points, which is totally fine for you. Now, he's got Devontae Parker, who seems to be his favorite weapon in that offense back, um, and while his efficiency has been on point so far this year, he's been struggling in pass yards and total volume. I expect all of that to go up. I expect this offense to start clicking, and on top of all of that, they're going up against Houston this weekend, which is a phenomenal matchup for this quarterback. I, I think, too, as a slam dunk play this week and a guy that you should be watching rest of season for a QB one type of player. Yeah, I absolutely love that call. And I completely agree with you on Tua's outlook for the rest of the season. You know, he's getting a lot of hate, but he's been playing really well and he still hasn't had a healthy Will Fuller on the team yet. Kasicki's playing really well. And like you said, he played well last week against the Buffalo Bills, 15 points. Yeah. You know, you might not be too excited about that, but they give, give up the least amount of fantasy points to opposing quarterbacks. So that is very, very good for somebody who's, you know, had to deal with injury to not only himself, you know, the trade rumors, the, his, all his weapons. I, I really like that call as well. Awesome. Jay, who is the next guy that you think we should be starting in week nine? So I'm going to go to your favorite team, the Cleveland Browns, and one Mr. Jarvis Landry. Yes, he did have a couple of drop passes last week, but that is not like him. Um, he, since returning from injury, he's averaging nine targets per game. As we know, whatever this you know drama is with Odell Beckham Jr., it looks like OBJ might not be a part of this team the rest of the season. Uh, he hasn't practiced the past few days, but Jarvis Landry already had a really good connection with Baker, especially if OBJ's gone. Um, I only see him, you know, he really turned it on at the end of last year when Beckham got hurt. Um, going up against Cincinnati, who gives up the 10th most fantasy points to opposing wide receivers. They've given up the 10th most passing yards. They've allowed in eight games, 12 wide receivers, double-digit points. So I think he's somebody you can have locked in easily as a, a wide receiver three. Uh, honestly, I'm pretty comfortable with him. Back-end wide receiver two who could put up a very big day. Yeah, um, I, I agree with most of what you're saying there, Jay. I think the opportunity obviously goes up with OBJ not playing. But Jarvis was already the primary receiver in this offense, even when OBJ was on the field, at least effectively. Uh, the one – Little caveat I will put in there is I think this Browns offense obviously wants to run the ball first. So in a run first offense like this, the the most run heavy team in the NFL and the Cleveland Browns is uh, it limits the upside for these pass catchers. But 
he's about as safe as they come for a wide receiver three in my right. mind. Definitely worth plugging into your lineups. Um, it's a low ceiling, but also a very high floor kind of play in my eyes. I don't know if Absolutely. you view it differently. No, I completely agree. The next player I want to talk about as a start this week is in stark contrast to the kind of player that Jarvis Landry is. While Jarvis Landry is that high floor, low upside kind of play, Van Jefferson for the Los Angeles Rams is the low floor, high upside kind of play that I love to plug into my flex spots. Um, aside from him just being the boom bust kind of guy, there are signs that lead me to believe he is a good start this week. Number one, Deshaun Jackson has exited the Los Angeles Rams. He is no longer a wide receiver for the Rams. And Deshaun Jackson and Van Jefferson were fighting for some of the same targets. Van Jefferson's average depth of target this year was 14 yards, which shows that they want him to be that big play kind of receiver for them. Deshaun Jackson is also known for being a big play receiver. So those targets should all be going Van Jefferson's way now. He was already receiving target volume in three of his last five games. He's gotten at least six targets. And now this week, they're going up against one of the worst defenses against opposing wide receivers. The Tennessee Titans, on average this season, are giving up 37 PPR points to opposing wide receivers. There is plenty of room there for Cup, Woods, and Van Jefferson to find success. And if Van Jefferson breaks off a long touchdown, like he can do, you are going to be very happy you plugged him into your starting lineup. Yeah, I absolutely love that. And uh, the thing is, I think I like to play guys like Landry and Van Jefferson in my lineup together because you have that safety with Landry. You have that upside with with Van Jefferson. If they both hit, you can have a really big day. He's the deep threat in this offense. Uh, you know, roster construction is key where you want the types of plays that you want to make with these two, two different players. Yeah, absolutely. I'm way more comfortable pairing a guy like Van Jefferson with a Jarvis Landry than a Van Jefferson and a Chase Claypool. Some yep. of these lower target absolutely. big play kind of guys. Uh, that's a great point, Jay. Now that we have talked about the four players we want to start, we are going to go and talk about the four players we are shoving on the bench this week. So, Jay, we're going to come to you first for your first bench player. Who are you benching in week nine? Well, I know you're a Clemson fan, so you might not like this, but I'm going to go with Trevor Lawrence. Um, he hasn't looked fantastic this year he's only had one game with multiple passing touchdowns only two games with over 300 passing yards and he's got a very difficult matchup like we talked about Tua looked pretty good against the Buffalo Bills uh they even they still give up the least amount of fantasy points to opposing quarterbacks um they've only allowed two different quarterbacks to throw for multiple touchdowns Patrick Mahomes and the legend Taylor Heineke so between those two that's that's the only ones that have done it I don't trust Trevor Lawrence with the way he's looked uh, the tough matchup. I just, it, this is more of a super flex. I don't think in QB one leagues, you were starting him anyways, but he's been a pretty decent starter as a, a QB two in super flex leagues. But I think he's somebody you need to leave on the bench if you possibly can. Yeah, I am a Clemson fan, but I would be even more upset having to start Trevor Lawrence in fantasy than I would be hearing you say you would bench him. Uh, that is not a good start for me this week and not a good start until further notice. Uh, I don't think Trevor Lawrence is a quarterback you can really trust rest of season unless there's major changes made there in Jacksonville. AKA Urban Meyer fired. AKA Urban Meyer fired. And uh, you might see a little bit of a trend here with, uh, with our sits, but Jay, the next player I want to talk about is another rookie quarterback, but one that absolutely exploded last week in fantasy. And that is Justin Fields. So I, I hate to throw water on this, uh, on this excitement, right? I, I hate to be the Debbie Downer here, but I just want people to know to not expect what we saw from Justin Fields last week going forward. That was an incredible game. But if you look at the game log, all of his fantasy points came in the rushing game. He only threw for 175 passing yards, which is about standard for what he's been doing this season, um, even on the high side a little bit. He is a low volume passer who's going to rely on that rushing. And I don't trust Matt Nagy or the Chicago Bears offense to be able to get him going the same way they did last week. Justin Fields is not a quarterback you can trust this week going up against the Pittsburgh Steelers. It is a tough defense. I, I'm just hands off until further notice. Yeah, Again, maybe until Matt Nagy's gone. Yeah, I completely agree. <laughs> and that's what I was about to say. You know, it, is it a coincidence that Matt Nagy wasn't there because he had COVID? And, you know, Probably, but I like to this, pretend like it's not. <laughs> exactly. Everybody likes to pretend that. But, yeah, I'm with you. I don't think – He's definitely somebody you, you can't rely on, especially having a week like last week um, going up against a tough Pittsburgh defense. So I really like that as well. Okay. I think we're done talking about rookie quarterbacks now. We can stop trashing them. Who are you putting on the bench next, Jay? 
We are done talking about rookie quarterbacks, but I'm going to talk about a rookie running back. Um, the darling of all offseason was Javante Williams, and uh, I've been saying all offseason, all season, that Melvin Gordon isn't going anywhere, and he has not. Uh, Javante Williams has the talent, but he's just not getting the touches to get the production people are expecting out of him. He's, he's looked electric. I definitely think he's a guy that in Dynasty you want – you know, if something were to happen to Melvin Gordon and he took over this backfield, he could be a league winner. But right now, he's only got two touchdowns on the season. He's only has one game over 10 rushing attempts since week three. Gordon has more rushing attempts, more red zone rushing attempts, more red zone targets, more receiving yards, more rushing yards, and more total touchdowns than Javante Williams. Now, I think he's a fine flex play, but people are treating him as a high-end running back too. And I just, I don't see it. He has to break off a long touchdown to return that type of value. And he's not getting the touches that leads to that happening on a regular basis. Um, he also has a tough matchup going up against Dallas, who gives up the eighth least fantasy points to opposing running backs. They've only allowed one running back to rush over 100 yards, which was Damian Harris. So tough matchup. He's not getting the work that you would like. I think, you know, it's going to be hard if you have him on your team. You're probably going to have to start him, but I would much rather have him as a flex play than a running back too. And honestly, if you could find a replacement with a better matchup, I would go for it. Yeah, I uh, I agree with you there. And I think as much as we want to will the backfield to Javante Williams away from Melvin Gordon, he's just been playing too well. It's it's not going to happen this season, especially. And there's a real likelihood that it doesn't happen next season either. Yeah, there's no there's reason a... not to bring Melvin Gordon back. Exactly. So could... There's talk they might re-sign him. And if they do, all the Javante Williams truthers' heads are going <laughs> to explode, which I like him. He, he's talented. I mean, like I said, he's looked phenomenal on the field. But, you know, in today's NFL, it's, it's all about the committee, the one-two punches. And... I just he not that I don't see him getting that type of workload this year. Yeah, I'm agreeing with you there. Uh, the last player that I want to talk about today, this is not a rookie or a quarterback, so we're going mm -hmm. completely off script here. It is a tight end, but we're sticking on the same team as my last start, and this is the tight end Tyler Higby for the Los Angeles Rams. I was among the people that at a certain point became infatuated with Tyler Higby. He had that four-game stretch that really made people believe he could be the next tight end to break into that top tier. And you know what? He's just never quite made it there. And in this high-volume Rams passing offense, he's just not the option I want. The three receivers I mentioned earlier, Cup, Woods, Jefferson, and even Daryl Henderson as a pass-catching back all seem to be better options in this offense from a receiving standpoint only than Tyler Higby. He's just not getting the targets which is also baffling because when we look for tight ends that we want to stream, we look for guys that are on the field a lot and running a lot of routes. Tyler Higby's on the field all the time and runs a lot of routes for the team. He's just not targeted whenever he's running those routes. He's not a guy I can trust. Um, and the final nail in the coffin for him this year for me was that matchup last week against the Houston Texans. That is a matchup where he absolutely should have gone off Things were lined up. It was a good matchup. Houston is not good against the tight end. And you know what? He couldn't get it done. And this week, he is going up against a team that is much better against the tight end. While Tennessee struggles against wide receivers, they've done a pretty good job of shutting down the, shutting down the tight end position this year. Uh, I don't see any way I can plug him into my lineup. I would rather start a guy like um, CJ Uzama and hope for a touchdown than I would Tyler Higby. Yeah, I'm with you. I'm a well-known Higby hater. Uh, me and our fr good friend LQ call him Tyler Higg bust because he has lived off those four games from two years ago, two years ago. Now, you know, if you could pick him off the waiver wire, a last round pick, something like that, that's different. But he was going, you know, as a top 10 tight end going in the middle rounds. And that's always been the big thing for me. So I'm with you. I just, he's not getting the targets in this offense. Um, he's still living off of that four game stretch from two years ago. And I just, I don't think he's that good as a fantasy asset. Don't, he could get, three catches for 45 yards in this game, but I want to plug someone in that I think has that kind of upside. I'd rather get skunked by CJ Uzama right. and hope for that one, two touchdown game than I would plug Tyler Higby in for a couple catches and 40 right. yards. He's that, he's like that run of the mill waiver dart throw tight end that he's going to get a couple catches, you know, 50 ish yards and you're hoping for a touchdown. Yeah, completely agree. Guys, that is going to be it for Start Sits here in Week 9. Thank you for tuning in. We will be back next week with some more Start Sits, trade targets, waiver ads. So make sure you like this video and subscribe to our channel not to miss out on any of that. Until then, though, we are out of here. See you later, guys. We'll see you.